Good afternoon, everyone. All right. My name is uh, Engineer Al-Aghdali al I come from Al-Basa. I'm a chemical engineer by profession. Uh, I have uh, different areas of specialization. However, part of uh, chemistry or the science behind these chemicals, I've been with you for 10 years. So, not actually located, but even in time. Uh, so, when this thing came up, I had to contribute and give my presentation so that people could understand some of these items which are not in the public area. So, today, I'm going to be very fast because some of them have already been uh, issued before or uh, say earlier, but this is for the purpose of the owner of the members and uh, all the uh, protocols up. So I'll give a very fast history because uh, the document is with uh, Hansa Delita in the parliament, so you can actually retrieve that document as well. Uh, the document that was uh, tabled by Honorable uh, Bush Bay uh, in 2022 around October, so you could retrieve some of the data uh, from that. All right, so I'll talk about a bit of history. Uh, the pesticides that which are used for the growth or generation of uh, uh, these two growth crops and the recommendations and the way forward uh, all of us. All right. So initially, uh, things came into light with regards to legislation by the Mayor of Local Native in about 1934, whereby they were a bit agitated with regards to the consumption and the effects of Mira. So the Mayor of Local Native the Council uh, restricted the consumption of Mira only to the elders, only and they have severe uh, penalties uh, for those who are not going to be permitted. And it's such a round Thereafter, in 1938, people became uh, very agitated with regards to how the, the communities were affected. And that actually uh, translated to the past, other parts of the country, that is, for example, Isiolo, which now led to the ban of Milan to Isiolo uh, and the northeastern region. And actually, until the Second World War, and to the African soldiers, especially in the during uh, uh, the fight uh, for the independence. So one of the effects that they saw is that Wale uh, and Ajishi who were actually in the, in the mountainous forests and all, when they were consuming these products, it was actually affecting their performance. So that was the first instant uh, effect that we actually see. Uh, in about 1945, uh, a bill was drafted to the British Protectorate to control the Mira uh, in all parts of the care of the country country except to male. And even for the male people themselves, it was only for ceremonial use and the permit will be given by the elders. So the ban started in 1945. Therefore, uh, the bill was in 1947 and it was permitted through permit and we're going to see one of them from the local district officers and the native authorities in Melbourne and Hembo. So permits were allowed but only for specific people and majorly the adults. Then in 1951, the male elders, because of that ban, and the economy was actually hit, they requested for the lifting of the ban administratively and the Mira prohibited, prohibited Ordinance Cup 59 was issued. Whereby, however, when it was uh, lifted administratively, Northern Province, the ban continued and the youth in Mera were also controlled not to consume it. You ask yourself why. In 1967, there are proof of permits which have already been uh, taken to the social media. We are going to share a show with one of them. Whereby the Mera Prohibition Act of 1962 was the one issuing these kind of funds. Now, in 1977, uh, the, the, the ordinance was repealed. However, there was no legal uh, statute to replace the ordinance. In 2013, in between that, uh, the enactment of the Court Act 2013, listing Mira as a sugar crop, but there were no regulations then, because the committee or task force was supposed to be established and look after this item. However, in 19, uh, 2016, a statute law under the Miscellaneous Amendment Act No. 7 of 2016, uh, the task force, they enacted it, it attained a legal status, Mira. However, there were challenges industrially, uh, and the task force was established to look into these challenges. Uh, the information is there in the document. Uh, other laws included uh, to control directly and directly. And uh, we, can, we will see that we have the Food and Nutrition Security Policy of 2011. There are about 20, 20 legislative acts which are controlling this industry. Now, in 2019-2020, there was attempts of banning in Mokka in Mombasa County. Uh, non consumers public participation was held in Naivasha, and I will show you the proof of that. Uh, parliamentary debate on expanding international markets. I think when I read the album of uh, the, uh, the video by our Honorable Adam Duale, people started retrieving those those uh, videos, and now it went too much to public. So the attempts were there uh, to ban or to actually control this product. In 2022, the amendments were tabled in Parliament. Uh, publication, uh, public participation reports were, were shown, and one of the items I think my colleague Dr. Fatima has mentioned is the declassification of Cathedral and Cathedral. Now, in my presentation, I would like to stress that I will look at Mira and Muka from a different perspective. We have been 
Shoshenko, uh, where we have been focusing majorly on Kathir and Kathir, but we have not been looking at the other broader uh, taking on that is there. Right? Uh, one, one aspect that everyone is mentioning, and I would like you to all be aware of, in science, when you say that Mura, Mira and Muka are the same, is with regards to their species. But when you go down uh, below species, these are different. So they are different problems. Now, in 2024, the current, we have the Mombasa Security Infrastructure County is one in the entry of Mukaka, and of course the National Apro. Coastal elders and general public are trying to demand the legalization of Mukaka, and the work is in progress, and hopefully we're going to win this war. All right? Now, that's the history. Now, in the technical committee representation, I'd like you to look carefully. Major state corporations and power statutes were present during. The, in, uh, the establishment of uh, the Mira Art Industry Code of Practice by Kels. And if you see in the list, none from the consumers from the coastal region is represented. However, someone might, might argue that we have employees from the coastal region, but did they have that technical competence to ensure that this product uh, was included in the, in, in the regulations or in the standards to see their effects? None. You can go through that. KNWA. 2940 to 2021, this is a document by Kels. Alright, so this has moved uh, so much around uh, the permit that was issued in 1967. So it shows that we had previously acts that were prohibiting this product. Why are we spreading the rumors or the propaganda that we want to ban this product? Right? Now, I want you to understand, and I would like to press none of you should come or whoever. That women investors and those who are she can see over here and go up, a banner, a man's evaluation before even presenting. Because someone might argue, but it will not be best designs for the day that you will not go up. No, we are not going up. They have their own chemicals which are destroying the, the, the globe. And now we have these other menace that we need to tackle. Unfortunately, uh, there was a research report by the Roots to Food Initiative in 2019. They illustrated that 34% of the chemicals used in the pesticide which are been thrown in the European Union are being utilized in Kenya. And the ones who approved it are Pest Control Products Board. So out of those chemicals that are being utilized in the pesticides, 34% have already been banned in the Europe. And everyone comes up with this question, where are you going, Europe, Papa? Why are you going? What's about when they have very stringent measures with regards to food safety and nutrition? So they have a benchmark at where you are here at the moment. They have the technical expertise. So we leave that argument and debate somewhere else. And that's why we are actually uh, taking that. In fact, our best control employees support and the kids and the rest, they are taking this standards benchmarking from them. So why are we not supposed to mission them? All right? Now, 64 active ingredients for chemicals and 142 different product formulations are being used right now uh, in, these, in these farms. So you can imagine how many chemicals are there. A survey was done of 1,324 uh, farmers. They admitted that 1.4% they were carcinogenic. These are respons responses. This is the feed down in Kenya. 2.9% are mutagenic. Now, I will come to this. This is, this is another point here. When we say something is mutagenic, is that it, it, it has the ability to deform itself and come up with different codes of DNA. That's another, there's a whole research in that. That is done also in Kenya. I'll come to that. These chemicals that are present in the pesticides which have been used. 5.4 endocrine disruptors, we have been mentioned about that. And 2.3, uh, sorry, 23 uh, neurotoxic. Now, 70% are high or very high toxicity towards fish. Most fish have been in the fish farming have been killed. They have uh, admitted 41% are killing the bees, which will negatively affect the food production in the future. So we're not only looking at Mubuka and Mira, but also look at our food production. Leave alone that. Meet many people, many farmers in the central region have converted their food agricultural produce to become so we are being forced. The food security in the country is going to be affected big time. Honorable members. All right. Now, 20% of the farmers use 27 chemicals which are withdrawn from Europe. Some of them are methylene as in government. But methylene has been totally banned in the Americas, in Middle East, in Europe, in Asia, and Europe, because it is instantly affecting you as a human being. Unfortunately, we're using it in the country. You could, have, you could ask yourself who permitted this. Four zero one recommendations collected from agrovet leaders. Agrovet dealers, the ones who have been licensed to advise these farmers. 201, they are admitting that 43 of the products recommended, 10, 10 of them have been already banned in Europe, Nazine, who are imported into the country. So they are being utilized as we speak. Now, agro-dealers want to license who's user. Now, what about Mubuka? 
Kwa sababu hizi pesticides zinatumika other products. Na unapoka the frequency of pesticide use is 42 times. The environmental health score and human score they are very high and the number of active ingredients are 17 chemicals out of those 64, right? So, and this uh, this report is coming from uh, Kenya Organic Agriculture and Tropic Collaboration with Ecotrack Consulting. You can actually Google that and you get that report. So, we mean that apart from these caffeine and caffeine, we have another issue that we need to tackle, and these are the pesticides. They are killing us, and they're being used in the growth and germination of Google. Now, what do we recommend? We recommend that the elimination of pesticides through the PCPB, those with active ingredients that have been withdrawn from the EU immediately, all right? Immediate withdrawal from the farms of the anti counterfeit and certified pesticides. I would like to mention that in 2023, the County Commission of them mentioned that the farmers are utilizing anti counterfeit and certified. Achana and Aizia Mbazos in the listed and are withdrawn from the EU. Vijana, Walioko Kule, Wametunga, Zao that they are uncertified. So you can imagine the toxicity, the uncertainty, the isochemicals that they have come up with to ensure it is an end there. MCA wow, I think you know, and I say, man, I go on, I come here. You guys, you are harvesting Mboka within one or two days after spraying. And it's supposed to take at least seven days. They won them. He won them in about 2019. You go up, you go up your story. You can imagine they're only taking two days so you're ingesting caffeine and caffeine and pesticides which have been not only harmful but withdrawn as a any anti counterfeit. So it is a multi agency team that is going to handle this apart from you honorable members. And by the way, the government is aware, it's not that they're not aware, they are aware we need to enforce on this matter. Now, stringent measures and strict inspection and enforcement on oversight on farming practices, this has to be there. However, it is said that there is an ongoing uh, training practices that are supposed to be done on the farms. So we need just to ensure that the company from the parliament needs to look into to this matter, especially on the agricultural uh, sector. Rigorous capacity awareness campaign on healthy farming practices, including not only pesticides, we have fungicides, herbicides, and hygiene of course. Right? Now, the introduction of alternative farming to Muka Omira, despite being too regulated, that's why you see there are a lot of effects you have seen, dropouts, healthy issues, and the rest. Uh, last but not least, big petitioning of the freedom to ban on Mbuka uh, Omira in each county. I believe there will be some type of war between you guys, between uh, those who support and those who do not support, but let the law allow to ban freedom to ban or not to ban. Supposedly, if people want to go to those unhealthy habits, watch your way delay, then they will see their effects. However, the president is mandated to protect the people of this Republic of Kenya. And of course, you as the legislators. Asante Sam, Ms. Kisa. It's important to indicate that our two presenters, uh, maybe Professor Okido, engineer Lamad bin Lamadi, holds a first class degree, uh, holds a first class honors master's degree in chemical and processing engineering from uh, Kifar University of Petroleum and Minerals and UAE University, known for the diligent work ethics, resourcefulness, and exemplary leadership, as well as significant contribution to the oil and gas industries, domestically and internationally. Alafudatarelio present Mapema, Dr. Fatima Jenedi, uh, a clinical anesthetist and a community psychologist, works in the health sector. Fatima is currently pursuing her PhD at Harvard Medical School, uh, an, an effective writing for healthcare. Uh, uh, I need to say Fatima promotes the lives of people who use drugs in the coastal parts of Kenya. Dr. Fatima pioneered the women who use drugs program in Kenya in 2013, and her work has been published as a chapter in a global drug policy. Uh, okay, number one. So the two experts, Vile uh, Vice Chair Mwishmiwa and Bayo Msema, how are you going to talk about the so to appreciate Kwa Pamoja Pokal, and uh, to move in to another session, let's appreciate them again. Thank you so much, Katara and Mia, for being here. So I want to, I see that you are going to move in here, Konge, Sana Sana Haya, by the co-presenter. But if you are going to ask you, Kwa Sasa Kamili, tutakuwa na presa mbae naenda live na mbina kakumi na chano tusa sabi kwa za nikuwa nataka ni niu 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 waone tuende tuseta pake nje alafi mwache wa ishimiwa wa zuhumu zipike yao 